Jesus, how I love you. Come on, worship with me this morning. How I love you, and how can I live without your love? How can I breathe without your touch? How can I live without your word? How I love you. Come on, sing it to him. Jesus, how I love you. Jesus, how I love you. Jesus. How I love you. How can I live? And how can I live without your love? How can I breathe without your touch? And how can I live without your word? How I love you. You are more than life to me. You are more than life to me. Come on, somebody help me. You are everything I need. Come on, help me. Jesus, you are more than life to me. Tell him, church. <laughs> Tell him, Jesus, you are, Jesus, you are more than life to me. Jesus, you are everything I need. Jesus, you are more than words can say. Tell him, church. You are, you are, Jesus, you are more than life to me. Jesus, you are everything I need. Jesus, you are more than words can say. You are, you are, Jesus, you are more than life to me. Jesus, you are everything I need. Jesus, you are more than words can say. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. As you can see, I am Jeffrey Zimmerman filling in once again for Pastor Sean Pender. As always, I am delighted and honored to do so. I have known Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy for many, many years, over 25 years. Uh, wonderful, wonderful man and woman of God. Uh, they love God with all their hearts. They love each other with all their hearts and their kids, their ministry staff. And then, of course, all of you, uh, the precious saints of the Most High God. And it is my honor and privilege to be on Pastor Sean's platform today, once again ministering to all of you. It's such a joy and a privilege to do that. My wife Melanie and I are so excited to be working alongside Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy in the ministry. And uh, we want to join our faith 
with all of you this morning. Once again, in prayer, believing God for the impossible, believing God for a miracle in your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Melanie and I lift up the people of God once again before you today. God, touch each person right where they live. Let the Holy Spirit be so close to your people. As I speak your words today, minister to them, comfort them, encourage them, strengthen them, give them the answers that they seek, Whatever area in their life they need help in, whether it's a healing in their physical body, whether it's a financial miracle, whether it's a miracle on the job, a miracle in their marriage, a miracle in their family with their kids or relatives, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you meet each person where they are today and give them a miracle in your mighty name. For it is not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit, O Lord. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Of course, we are continuing in the series, The Miracles of Jesus. And... Uh, such an awesome series to be able to do. We, we are enjoying it, and uh, I believe many of you are enjoying it as well. Uh, I've seen a number of your comments, and uh, you, you have said that you are enjoying the series, and we're so grateful uh, to God. To God be the glory. So the title today is, Your Deliverance is Here. Your deliverance is here. You know, when you get caught up in the storms of life, you know, the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. You know, and, and I don't care who you are. You know, how much faith. You may be a person of strong faith. You may be a person whose faith isn't so strong. But everyone has trials and tribulations. Everyone goes through life. And life can sometimes be very, very tough. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to know that God is right there. Sometimes He seems so distant. And your faith gets tested and stretched sometimes to the breaking point. But your deliverance is here. And we're going to see that today. In Luke chapter 7, starting with verse 16, we read, And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited us his people and this rumor of him jesus went forth throughout all judea and throughout all the region round about and the disciples of john showed him of all these things now see jesus had been performing miracles and so the people were saying a great prophet is risen up among us. And they were saying God has visited his people. And so Jesus, uh, the, the, the stories of the things he was doing spread. Went throughout all Judea. But now John the Baptist, who's the one they're talking about. He was having a problem. See, John had been locked up by King Herod because John told King Herod that it was not lawful for him to have his brother Philip's wife let me tell you something folks 
when you are a man or woman of God and you tell the truth, sometimes it can get you into trouble. You know, and we are not promised that we will not have hard times in this life. You know, the Bible says in this world, we will have trouble. Jesus had trouble. You know, we're not any better than him. Jesus said, if the world hates you, remember, they hated me before they hated you. You see, so just because you're doing the will of God doesn't mean you won't get in trouble. You will. You see. And so John was in trouble. His faith was at an all-time low. You know, he was, he was struggling a bit. He was wondering, like many of us do, am I doing the right thing? Am I really doing what God told me to do? Did I mess up somewhere? Did I miss something? You know, so, so he's having difficulties. So his disciples showed him all of the uh, things that were going on with Jesus. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus from in prison. Now John is talking to his sending his two disciples to Jesus saying, art thou he that should come or look we for another. Now this is the same John the Baptist that baptized Jesus in the Jordan. He saw the Holy Ghost descend on Jesus in the bodily form like a dove. He heard the Father's voice from heaven say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. But how many of you know that even though you may have had a visit from God yesterday, you may have felt the anointing of God yesterday, that's not always good enough for today. Some of us need a fresh touch every day. We need, we need God to touch us every day. Yesterday's touch won't do. Yesterday's revelation won't do. We need something for us today, you know. So, you know, even though John saw these things and heard these things, he had doubts. He was, he was beginning to question you know, he was beginning to to wonder whether he was really doing the right thing. And so he said, he's asking Jesus, see, he's doing the right thing. He's going to the right person instead of John talking about Jesus or or having bad thoughts about him. He's he's asking Jesus through his disciples, you know, because he can't do it. He's in prison, but he's asking through his disciples, are you the one to come or do we need to look? for someone else look at verse 21 in that same hour jesus cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight so what he did was instead of him answering the question right away he had john's two disciples sit down and watch a miracle service, you see, that Jesus was doing. And they watched him cure many of their infirmities and plagues, cast out evil spirits, give sight to many that were blind. Then Jesus answering said unto John's two disciples, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see, John's real question was, are you, Jesus, the Messiah? Is our deliverance here, or are we still waiting for it? Was basically his question. Jesus' answer 
I'll show you why Jesus' answer to John was so effective. See, John was a prophet. So as a prophet, John would have known the prophecies in the Bible regarding Jesus. Look at Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4. I never will forget when I heard Pastor Sean talk about this right here. It was eye-opening to me, and I believe it'll help some of you as well. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Look at verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. How about that? See, Isaiah was saying that when God comes, when the Messiah comes, these things are what will happen. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame man will leap. The tongue of the dumb will sing. So, John understood when his disciples reported back to him. Jesus was saying, by these miracles, you know it's me. You know I'm the Messiah. And that settled the question for John forever. He never had to ask again, are you the one to come? And what I want to say to all of you today is on these broadcasts, the blind see, the deaf hear, the cripples walk, the dumb speak. The same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus when He walked this earth is the same Holy Spirit that is among us today. And what I want you to understand is that your deliverance is here. Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit is here and He hears you. He knows about your questions. He knows about your doubts. He knows about your confusions. And He has come to let you know that your deliverance is here. He is here. So for those of you today who may have been confused, may have been thinking, you know, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? God is here to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. Your deliverance is here. We want to pray with you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your people have been encouraged by this word today. I pray that they know now beyond the shadow of doubt that you are here with them right where they are. You're not ignoring them. You haven't forgotten about them. But you're here. And their deliverance has come. Lift your hands to heaven and just give God praise, folks. Just say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your deliverance is here. God will come through for you. In Jesus' name. Keep believing. Keep seeking. And you will have the answer you're looking for. Amen. 
and amen. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity on this morning to stand and support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, you can visit us online at seanpender.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. PayPal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. That email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888, and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy. We appreciate you so much. We love you. We'll never take you for granted. We love you. God bless you. Take care now. Bye-bye.